Hello and welcome to Irish Football Fan TV. This is the match preview. We're in Paris. It's a bit of a... We're just kind of sitting Cultural on... Cultural area. Yeah, we're sitting on the, the ledge um, beside a train station. Uh, it's the only place that was kind of quiet that we could get somewhere to film. Um, and Jay has join, uh, kindly joined me to uh, have a chat ahead of this game. Um, I'm not going to say it's a big game because of how the campaign has gone, but in terms of Stephen Kenny, I think it's a big game for him because if this does go badly, like a, a hiding here, and maybe a, you know even a saving grace at the weekend, but he needs to avoid a hiding over these next two games, and it could be difficult because he does obviously have players out injured. Yeah, to be honest, I think even the feeling in the world was after the the last board meeting in June after the double header against Greece and Gibraltar was we probably even need a couple of positive results from these two games. And you're saying like probably not a big game in terms of the context of the group. Probably not in terms of we're probably realistic now after the Athens result. We're not any chance we had to probably get in top two is gone, but. If you were to kind of be optimistic, you kind of feel this is the last chance to do and really in terms of getting out of the group. And it kind of nearly is, this window is kind of last chance to do for Stephen Kenny, as I kind of just alluded to earlier in my point, that like you really feel that definitely a positive result Sunday and, and not a bad defeat here, or realistically speaking, if we could try and get two positive results. But the task of trying to get two positive results now has been made very, very difficult. Like we're out, you know, our, our main man. It's bad to think that Evan Ferguson, our main man, considering this time 12 months ago he hadn't even a cap at senior level but it's just how much his graph and grass or graphic has rose in the last 12 months without our leader and Seamus Coleman even the Matt Doherty and even as well I think even the likes of John Egan being out is a big loss to the back and I think even Mickey Johnson as well because of the impact he's made since he's came into the team and he would have been a great option I think off the bench and he definitely would have his pace and trickery would have caused France that problem so I would say we're without maybe you know three to four of our best kind of options, which is going to make it very, very difficult. But we always kind of seem to do well. These type of fixtures never really worry under Stephen Kenny in terms of, I think we will get a response. I think we will get, say, the old saying, a moral victory, a good performance that we won't get disgraced. France generally don't tend to have a history of annihilating teams. Like They only put three past Gibraltar um, in... The, their last uh, in the last series of games, they only put one past Greece. Like obviously, it was a struggle for us in in Dublin, for them. Like so, you're kind of hoping to be the same kind of way. But maybe now the fact that they're a little bit more prepared and know what to expect from us. And I think as well, that game came three days after they played the Dutch, which they would have put a lot into and would have really targeted that game. Where this is now the first game in the window, so they'll be that probably a little bit more focused and switched on. And I'm not even sure if they actually played again this weekend. So. Yeah, big, big ask, um, and we're definitely travelling over here and uh, very, very much so optimistic instead of, or more in hope than op optimism. Yeah, 100%. I think uh, Egan, he did the press conference today. I don't know if that means he's actually going to play or whether it was maybe a decoy by Stephen Kenny. Sometimes they send the captain out um, and uh, then sometimes they don't play. I don't think if Egan's 100% right, he'll play. So um, I, I actually predicted on the starting 11 show that Duffy will probably come in in the centre beside uh, Nathan Collins and Darrow Shea, which I think is, a, is is probably as good of a back three that we're going to get at the moment. Um, I know you could probably put Am Amab Amadeli in there, but at the same time, that the three of them together is kind of an inexperienced trio. Yeah. But I do think with Duffy in there, he has the experience and know-how playing in those games. Um, the likelihood is we're going to be defended deep um, so D Duffy's great uh, in those um, defence positions when, we're sit when we have to sit deep and we know we have to defend and he's going to sit back and head everything. Now, I don't think France will be hitting long balls up. It depends on whether Giroud is going to be playing or not. I'm not sure, but it's likely that uh, Griezmann and Mbappe would be playing. So I can't imagine that uh, Giroud would fit in there as well, um, just in terms of the style of play. So um, it, it could be a game that's probably kept on the deck. Right wing back's a position. I'm not really sure what's going to happen there for us because I, I, I said I'd like to see Festi there, but just that's just purely just because pace-wise to deal with Mbappe. Yeah. But not from a defensive point of view because he's not that good uh, a defender and Stephen Kenny kind of views him more as a as an attacker. But I think Jason Knight could actually be that person who, who fills that void because he played well against Gibraltar. I know it's Gibraltar, but he did play that position and he played it well. Um, so I don't know if that's coming into Stephen Kenny's think, and I can't think of anyone else who would play there other than maybe Alan Brown. But um, yeah, and even I know again probably even more of a step up and more credit in the bank in terms of when he played there in the, in the Scotland game in the Nations League last summer. I know Robinson wouldn't have been as high up the field uh, for Scotland, but you see the way he plays Liverpool and Scotland, he kind of nearly does kind of play like as a wing back or as an attacking attacking option on that left. And he kept him very very quiet that day, and he's done it at. A pretty decent level in the, with championship level with Preston over the last couple of years. Now it's probably 
the COVID season, I think was the last time he kind of played there. But you said like Jason Knight again, probably has the young on the legs, that he wouldn't be a bad option. I think Festy, yeah, definitely, because like, if you're thinking like, right, if we're going to, if we have any bit of an attacking outlet, which... I mean, we're just, yeah, go on. Um, it'd be perfect, you said, like to cancel out with the bapping and everything else like that, but as again, I think he might be that little bit more exposed to Bensfi. And again, even, even agreeing with your other point, I think if there's any way that Egan's a little bit of a doubt, I would hold off and keep him for Sunday because I think before all these injuries, Sunday would have been the big, big game's target. And I still think, despite all that, we should still probably look at it that way, obviously, without wanting to do too, too bad. Um, so you think this game's a free hit, essentially? No, because of Athens, because I, I do genuinely think for Stephen Kenny, and from what just from the way the board described it, I know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I picked it up that we needed two positive results from this window. Look, I think realistically speaking, Stephen would be probably Stephen Kenny would be gone by November. I think that Am's game in Amsterdam or the friendly afterwards against New Zealand would probably be his last game as Ireland manager, just because I don't see what well, results. Yeah, no, but I, if I'm it's not to be horrible, but it's, yeah, it's it was like result. the kind of like the Athens game. We kind of felt like we've been bidding, building towards it. That was going to make a break, right? This is a team, the Greece game, sorry, in Athens. This is a team that's kind of at our level. Let's kind of start now kicking on, showing that we are going somewhere. That we're like after the positive performance against France, it's always kind of one step forward, two steps back. So you kind of feel like we're not even now beating the teams that in the past that maybe with a more unattractive style of football with the likes of Mick McCarthy and Martin Neal that we were able to get results. So it is kind of a sign of probably uh, regression to be brutally honest but I think it's a little bit of a free hit in the sense of like there's no expectation we're all travelling over here on the hope there's not even going to be that many Irish over here like we've actually get back tickets um, um, and like that I'm uh, sorry I just got distracted with someone there in the background um, I was going to say like so we're not like, like the, the gawk don't you but anyway go yeah on. like um, so there's not that kind of many Irish over. It's, it's, it's kind of really reminds me of Farrell two years ago like there's not really kind of much being expected of us all. I think it's a little bit of a free hit that way, but in terms of like silence and the doubters and the people who don't even think Stephen Kenny should be there anymore, it's definitely not a free hit from that description. Yeah, well, I, I just mean in terms of, of results because obviously um, you were saying there about targeting the Dutch game on Sunday, but I do think that it's. Um, <sighs> Jesus, everyone's coming out to watch us tonight, but. Uh, but um, hi, yeah. Uh, Predictions? Yeah. <laughs> Um, sorry if anyone's watching this or every time we uh, we turn our heads uh, someone's looking at us and, and I don't know I guess they're wondering what we're doing but anyway um, I'm just look uh, it's coming down to results and at this stage um, you're, you're sacking Vera Pau for uh, results in the World Cup uh, getting us to a World Cup and then results in the World Cup and then player power I know no players are coming out and backing uh, it's completely here. Like the players yeah. constantly back Stephen Kenny. Yeah, like, but the, the but prime example is the Philip Quinn, James McLean incident before the Gibraltar game. Like never seen anything like that with the women. And you say like, you say like it's on based on results. Like with what Fiora Powell done, even just getting Ireland to Australia, that was a massive achievement in itself. Like I think it was even if you talk to most people involved in the women's game, that was probably two steps ahead of the road. Like the real plan was the first major tournament was Switzerland in 2025, not Australia this summer. Yeah, but that, that, that's what I mean. So like, um, you're looking at that and you're saying, well, if you're sacking her for that, and you know, you left things quite horribly. It looks like the writing's on the wall for Stephen. Unfortunately, um, I do think he's been good in the sense of how he's brought through players. I said that consistently throughout. But there comes a time where naturally it comes to an end of a cycle. He's been in the job long enough. Um, and look again, it's all hypothetical because if you, if you get two good results here, you could be saying, okay, well, you know, all of a sudden that's out the window. But then you could go and get a bad result again next month and then straight away back to that. And that's, it's always been the case in yeah. Kenny's tenure that he's always been one result away from really big trouble again. If you think back to the start of the Nations League campaign last summer and we lost away to Armenia and then lost at home to effectively a second string Ukraine team, you kind of felt bad result against Scotland, that's it, he's gone. But then we got two positive results in that campaign with the big win in Scotland and the draw in Poland against Ukraine. And as you said, like, you're thinking, right, this has taken off. And then Hamden Park came, which I thought he got harshly criticised for because I thought that was a tricky game. We played well and we were really on Joey Parrott scores every yeah. game. Like I, I remember saying to I remember saying after the friendly game in Malta and he didn't kinda of quite agree with me, but I remember saying to in, in the bar after the game to, to John Fallon, I kinda of thought that was kinda of like the sliding doors moment for Stephen Kenny because if that goes in it's two nil. And for the first time he's three positive results in the bank, three competitive positive results. And I think we probably go on to finish second that Nations League campaign and we're going into this qualifying campaign pretty much virtually guaranteed to play off instead of now praying and hope that every other result kind of goes our way. So it's just kind of little things like that. And so as you said, like, we could turn around and we could get two draws or we could get an hour defeat tomorrow 
and beat the Dutch on Sunday. But then we'll probably completely undo that work by losing home to Greece or getting a draw there. No, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but you just kind of feel past history of Stephen Kenny over the last three years. That's kind of unfortunate how it's kind of gone. Like, Do you think, because obviously Stephen Kenny is... Uh, He's coming into this game with a weakened squad, not through any fault of his own, that it would be quite harsh if we got hammered tomorrow that people would pin the blame on him. I would agree with that because, like, look, let's be brutally honest. When the news broke through yesterday that Evan Ferguson was ruled out, I wanted to ring Air Malton and ask for a refund. Like, it was just such a massive... Oh, the, fan, the fans continue over here, Paul. Um, but, like, there was uh, instantly straight away, we all got, like, a really kind of sick feeling when we found out Evan Ferguson was ruled out injury. It was a massive blow because obviously at the start of the season he's had fresh off a hat you're kind of thinking, right, it's going to be a back against the walls kind of type job. But with him up front, you always feel there's a goal there. Now that's kind of gone. I think we were contemplating not even travelling because he was... That's what I was just saying earlier. Like, so, and, like, obviously we always knew Coleman wasn't going to be here, but then you think back to the brilliant job he'd done in Mbappe in, in March. Like, you know, Dottardy, I know he hasn't played much, but like, he is a good player. And as I said, like even taking the fact that Johnson's ruled out injury and the start he's had to his Ireland career and stuff like that, like it doesn't just kind of help like so. But at the same time, people will turn around and say, like, oh, he's had three years to build a team and, you know, if you can't have a good team that you can rely on other players to come in and results and it's like what's gone before and everything else kind of like that. But I do agree with one thing. I think, I can't remember who said it. I think it could have actually been Joe Malloy and off the ball that the next Ireland manager will actually owe Stephen Kenny a lot of gratitude because he brought through these players. And I think by the time the next manager comes in, whether it is November or next year or whenever, like he won't have to integrate a new, pretty much a new team like Stephen Kenny. I said Kenny. that before. Yeah. I don't think it was me. Yeah. So I think so, uh, Joe Malloy. I, I think Joe Malloy quoted so. you. So. Um, but yeah, I do think there will be a lot of gratitude out there. Because in fairness to Stephen, he could have persisted with the old guard after Mick McCarthy and kept a lot of the older brigade. But you kind of realise, no, you know, I'm probably only going to get a campaign now. These now is the time to start. I've worked with these 21 lads. They're all starting to break through in first team football in England. A lot of them out their career soon as well, because he did give yeah. them a push. Like and like, I think Stephen doesn't even be kind of shy about that to be brutal. Not in, a, in an arrogant, cocky way, but remember, just before he even started the job, we were up at that event in Dundalk, and it was just after the Toulon summer, the previous summer, and he was saying, I think one or two players, maybe of even, had played first team football before that tournament, and then by the following season, I think every player who started every game were all playing first team football for their clubs whether they had gone on loan like so Jason Lumby went on the loan to Millwall that time but like Jason Knight broke into the Derby team that season things like that like Adam Eadie started to break into Norwich scored a hat trick in the FA Cup and stuff like that so you do agree like it has been like shop windows through the international proving like, oh these can do it against top players when they're playing for their country let's now see if they can do it with their clubs like and it has happened that way in fairness like mm. yeah I, I kind of want to wrap this up because they're getting some weird looks here uh, off all the passes by we're right beside the stairway and people are, are coming and going and it's just getting a bit um, annoying really uh, at this stage trying to film this but uh, I just think um, you look at their forward line I mean you've got Dembele you've got Juru, you've got Griezmann you've got Kolo Moani you've got uh, yeah. Kingsley Coleman who's unbelievable probably underrated um, every time he's come on he's destroyed us I remember even thinking back to the Euros how much he destroyed us um, he wins leagues every single place he goes he's, he's won the league in nearly every country he's played I think in every country <laughs> Tottenham should sign him so yeah he's been he's an excellent winger but um, then uh, yeah then, then in midfield I mean, you got you got the boys at uh, Real Madrid Camavinga Tunamani uh, um, and then the rest of midfields aren't, midfields aren't great. They've got Rabio, but then they've got you know the likes of Upa Makano, They've got uh, Kanate. They've got. Um, I wouldn't even say Kanate's going to play tomorrow. But that's, he hasn't played for Liverpool this season due to a lack but, of match. But fitness. that's goes to show the strength and depth. Yeah. You know they've got your man at, at Arsenal, uh, Saliba, who's a fantastic yeah. player as well. And every time he plays, Arsenal tend to win. So, I mean, they've got an absolute array of talent. They've got Minan and goal. So you're looking at what we have gone up against them and our, our best player out injured. You know, um, looking at that and, and knowing all that information, what's what's your score prediction? I would if, you, if we got a chance to finish the Irish abroad show on Sunday even before technical issues, and this is when we were kind of full of a lot more optimism. I would say, you know, I think we could go down with a game two one defeat. I don't think we'll get hammered. I don't think we'll get disgraced tomorrow because I think, like I said, these type of games aren't seem to rise to the occasion. And I think, you know, we know that like so Duffy Egan. Or not Egan, sorry, Collins. If Egan, if he's, if he's there, we know like these lads. There's can, still a chance he could play. Yeah, we know that these lads are going to give 120 percent, and they're going to leave absolutely everything out there. And well, probably my only slight concern is, is as I touched on it on Sunday night, is just Gavin's confidence at the moment. Now whether he'll go with Gavin, I know from the little bit I've seen of your uh, starting eleven show, you've gone with Gavin. 
but again, he's never let Ireland down. So hopefully, maybe the sight of a green jersey and just being surrounded by familiar faces could be, and a change of scenery could be just good for him. But if I'm to be honest, I think probably be two. I think France are probably. Like, to be brutally honest, as good as a game as well you played in Dublin, you always kind of felt France were going to score and there was another gear or two in them. I think they'll probably just do enough to make sure they have a, enough for a cushion, enough for a gap. And if they want, they could turn it on and maybe make it three or four. I think Green, Griezmann said that in the press yeah. conference. I saw Dan McDonald's tweets earlier and he said something like, uh, if we play the way we, we play, we, we basically will win the game. Yeah. So, like, um, I think France probably strutting along in second, third gear would probably win this game 2 0. But I still think it'd be a good display of Martin that we won't. Get overshadowed or over, over disgraced. Like the only thing is, like, you look back to the World Cup last year. Like teams that you would have said they played similar enough style to Ireland, Poland, maybe even Poland are probably a good bit ahead of us. But like Australia, who you would say pound for pound are probably a similar team to us. Like they batter them four one. So like you'd just be a little bit kind of afraid that way. But we showed in Dublin. Who knows what can kind of happen? We'll need a, we'll need a lot of luck to go away. Like let's be honest, similar to Dublin, we'll need Ireland to play unbelievable, and we'll need France and Mbappe and a few more in goal just to have a bit of an off day. But Lightning kind of doesn't strike twice. It happened in Dublin. I don't know if it's going to happen in Paris. Yeah, I will. Uh, I'd have to. I'd probably go the same. I'd probably go. Uh, I think two 0 would be would be nice uh, for us. Uh, I'd, I'd probably say two 0 loss. Um, I don't see a score. Or if I do see a score, now it'll be we go one up and then we can see two. I just can't see us. Um, I just can't see us getting the results. It's kind I just of think sad, France are that strong. It's nothing to do with us. Yeah, it's kind of sad that we're both green here that we'd be happy enough with a 2 0 kind of defeat. Because, like, well, it's just because players are injured. Yeah, I know. I mean, you've got no Coleman, you've yeah. got no Doherty, you've got no uh, Ferguson. I mean, if you take those players out, like the yeah. equivalent out of France, I know that, well, actually, you know, they probably wouldn't be that much uh, weaker but because uh, they've got such an array of and squad of talent. But I do think, yeah, you know, it has to be looked at in that sense. Yeah, you know, perspective is needed that. We are without players and and, and stronger yeah. players. No, it's just I mean it's probably just more just for example time, but maybe just more state of where we kind of really are a little bit at the moment. Like you think back to the last time you played France in a competitive game, was in Lyon and Euros in 2016, and we were 45 minutes away from knocking them out. Even the last time, I know it's a long, long time ago. There's no one who was playing that day that's involved, but that famous night, with Thierry Henry, the last time we played in a competitive game here in Paris, like we played them off the pitch that night. Like it's, it's just I kind of I know it's a long, long time ago, and that was. You can nearly say a golden generation of Irish players, so I'm not quite sure. It's just kind of, it's just disappointing to think that like we'd be happy enough if we only lose by a couple of goals. Yeah, well, I think yeah, I think uh, we we'll leave it at that. So uh, I don't understand why people can't leave us alone when we clearly got a light on and we're clearly talking here. Um, but anyway, and probably but can't think, understand us. Yeah, no, we can't understand anyway. them. We can't understand them. Either. So yeah, I think we'll leave it at that. Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Are you optimistic going to this game? You're probably not. But uh, if you are, let us know in the comments. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe. And uh, we'll speak to you all soon. Come on, you boys in green. Go.